In this video, we're going to look at thirds. A third is an irrational number. Irrational numbers are non-terminating, non-recurring decimals. An example of an irrational number could be pi. Pi is 3.14159 and so on and so forth. It doesn't stop and its pattern doesn't repeat. These numbers cannot be written in the form a over b, where a and b are integers. So for example, 3 over 4 is a rational number. So 3 is an integer and 4 is an integer. Thirds cannot be written in that form. When working with thirds, we leave them in what we call exact form. So that might be root 2. It might be root 6. This is what we call exact form. The idea is not to put them through a calculator and get a decimal answer. We simply manipulate them using different laws relating to thirds. If you do put them through a calculator, often you're going to truncate your answer and not give the whole value. In the video, we'll look at a range of the rules and operations and work through so you've got just about all the skills you need to get you started. To begin with, what we're going to do is start looking at simplifying thirds. Before I start, I think it's important to stress that there are an absolute whole host of ways of doing this. The main way I like to do it is to prime factorise the number. So let's look at 8. If we prime factorise 8, we have now 2. That will give us now 4. We will have 2 and that will give us 2. So as a product of prime factors, we could write 8 as 2, and I'm going to use a dot for multiplication, multiply by 2, multiply by 2. There are a couple of different ways that you could approach this. You could say that those were all under the root as 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. Once you have a pair, you can bring them out front. So what we'd have then is root 2 times by root 2 times by root 2, or we could write this as 2 root 2. My preferred choice is just to simply write this now as root 2 multiplied by root 2 multiplied by root 2. One of the important rules of thirds is if we have root a multiplied by root a, this will just give us now a. That makes sense. If we did now, for example, the root of 36 multiplied by the root of 36, it would be 36. And of course, the root of 36 is 6. 6 times 6 is 36. So what I like to do is the following. We can see right here I've got root 2 times by root 2. Root 2 times by root 2 is going to give us 2. So what we end up with then is 2 multiplied by root 2. And that would be our answer. So if we look at 12, we could write 12. We could divide that by 2. That would give us 6. We could divide that by 2. And that would now give us 3. So instead of root 12, so root 12 will be equal to root 2 multiplied by root 2 multiplied by root 3. We can see that root 2 times by root 2 will give us 2, so we'll end up now with two lots of root 3. This is my preferred choice. This is another option that you can bring these pairs out, but I prefer to write it like so. OK, let's look at this one right here. We've got root 28, so we could write 28. We could divide this by 2. That would now give us 14. We could divide that by 2, and that would give us 7. So we could write root 28 is going to be equal to root 2 times by root 2 times by root 7. Again, we've got the root 2 times by root 2, which is going to give us 2. So we'd have 2 root 7. OK, let's look at another one. Um, this one right here, what we've got is the following. We've got 18. So if we write 18, we can divide this by 2 and we're going to get 9. We can divide this by 3 and we're going to get 3. So we could write root 18 now as root 2 multiplied by root 3 and multiplied by root 3. This time we've got root 3 times by root 3, which is just going to give us 3. So we end up with 3 root 2. Root a times by root a is just going to give us a. If we look at some of the more interesting ones, root 200. I would like to write this now as root 2 multiplied now by root 100. We know root 100 is 10, so we could simply write this as 10 root 2. After a while, you might spot some of these, and it could make your life slightly easier. So, for example, now this one for root of 216. If we look at this one, we could write this now as the following. 216 is 6 cubed. So if we consider what we're going to have then now is the following. We can have root 6 multiplied by root 6, multiplied now by root 6. This is exactly the same, so we could say now that that's going to be 6 root 6. 
You can of course check these in a calculator and if you've got a new a star one it will just convert them straight into third form and there's our six root six. The key thing not to do though is start writing down that it's 14.69 as it's not it's 14.6969, and so on. So this is just given us a truncated answer. Okay so that's now just simplifying. So simplifying says so we'll do one more root of 50 we can write 50 now we can divide by 2, that's going to give us 25. We can divide by 5, and we can divide by 5. So we've got now that root 50 is going to be equal to root 2 multiplied by root 5, multiplied by root 5, which is going to give us 5 root 2. OK, let's move on. So that's basic simplifying. This time, we're going to look at simplifying when we're multiplying. The rule is, when we multiply, if we get root a, multiply by root a, we're going to end up now with a. So if we look at the first one, we've got root 6 multiplied by root 3. We can actually write this all under one root, if we like. So what we could do is write this now as root 18. Alternatively, we could split this up, and we could write this now as root 2 multiplied now by root 3. This is going to give me root 6 and then we're going to multiply that by root 3. So if you've gone this way, all you would do is exactly the method that we were doing before. You would look at 18 and you would say 18 divided by 2, that gives us 9 divided by 3, that gives us 3. So we'd have now root 2 multiplied by root 3, multiplied by root 3, that'll give us 3 and we'll have 3 root 2. Alternatively, you can split the 6. So what we've got here is root 2 times by root 3, which of course is root 6, multiplied by root 3. We can see exactly the same will happen, and we'll end up now with 3 root 2. On this one, again, you could say that it's root 50. We can put this all under one root. Alternatively, we can say it's root 5, multiplied by root 5, multiplied by root 2, by simply splitting 10 into 5 times by 2. Those will give us 5, that will give us root 2, and we saw in the last one that root 50 will give us 5 root 2. So your call on how you want to do them. I prefer this method, but again, it's really, really up to you. So if we look at this one, we got root 6. We could write this now as root 2 multiplied by root 3. Then we're going to multiply this by 12. If you prime factorise 12, you're going to get root 2 multiplied by root 2 multiplied by root 3. So what we can see then is we've got a pair of those. So that's going to give us 2. We're going to have a pair of these, which is going to give us 3. And then we're going to have 1 root 2 left over, which is going to now give us a total of 6 root 2. Alternatively, you could have written that now, if you wish. I think this is slightly longer-winded. If you multiply the 2, you're going to have the root of 72. So if you wanted to prime factorise this, you could say 72. You could divide it by 2. And that would give us now 36. And of course, the square root of 36 is 6, so we'd have 6 root 2. Alternatively, you could just keep going with this. As you can see, there are plenty of different ways. I'm showing you what I feel is the best way, but I'm also showing other ways that it might be taught. So what we'd have then is this scenario. So prime factorising, we'd have 3 times by 3 times by 2 times by 2, which gives us all of this, and then we would simplify. OK. Let's now look at a scenario here. What we've got now is 3 root 2 multiplied by 2 root 8. The whole idea on this one is to multiply the front two numbers and then deal with the thirds. You can, of course, rewrite this second one. Let's rewrite this. What we'll have then is 3 root 2 multiplied now by 2 root 8. One choice is the following. We can do 3 times by 2, which is going to give me 6. And then we're going to have root 2 multiplied by root 8, which will give us root 16. The root of 16 is 4. 6 times by 4 will give me 24. And again, if you put that through a calculator, you will see that happens. An alternative approach is to spot that root 8 is 2 root 2. So instead, what we could write is 3 root 2. Now this is 2 root 2. So this is now going to give us multiplying by 4. We're going to have 4 root 2. 3 times by 4 is going to give us 12. Root 2 times by root 2 is going to give us 2, which is going to be 24. 
Again, lots of different approaches on that one. If we look at this one, we can see 2 root 2 multiplied by 4 root 12. We could simplify this if we wanted. Alternatively, we could just simply multiply. 2 times by 8, uh, sorry, 2 times by 4 is 8. Root 2 times by root 12 is going to give us root 24. Or we could simply write this now as root 2. Root 12 can be written as now 2 root 3. We saw that in one of the videos. So we could multiply this by 2 root 3. 8 times by 2 is going to give us 16. Root 2 times by root 3 will give us root 6. So again, that's one particular method. Alternatively, you could write this as root 24. It's going to leave you a bit more work to do, but it's an alternative. And again, if you put this through a calculator to see this, you'll have 2 root 2, and then we'll multiply this now by 4 root 12, and that will now give us 16 root 6. As stated before, all of these have different approaches. You can see them however you wish, if you want to look at them like this, if you want to split them up, depending on how you've been taught or what you're comfortable with will determine how you approach them. Okay, in algebra, if we've got x plus x, we end up with 2x. If we have 3y minus y, we get 2y. If we have 5p plus 2p, we end up with 7p. Exactly the same works with thirds. We can add and subtract like thirds. In algebra, you can add and subtract like terms. In thirds, you can add and subtract like thirds. So what we've got here is root 2 plus 2 root 2. So if we said, for example, root 2 was x, this is x plus 2x, which is quite clearly going to give us 3x. So what we end up with then on the first one, root 2 plus 2 root 2 gives us 3 lots of root 2. On the next one, we've got root 3 plus 3 root 3. That's just going to give us 4 root 3. If you want to look at that now as y plus 3y, quite clearly it gives us 4y, in our case, 4 root 3. OK, let's pick up this one. On the face of it, it doesn't look like we can add them because they're not like certs. The idea is that we manipulate one to get it looking like the other. So root 8, we can write, as we've seen before, as 2 root 2. 2 root 2 plus root 2 will give us now 3 root 2. So all I've done is rewritten root 8 as 2 root 2. So if you look at the next one, this is going to give us 2 root 2 minus root 2, which will just be root 2. OK, let's look at root 12 minus root 3. In the previous video, or previous slide anyway, we saw that we could write root 12 as 2 root 3. So we've got 2 root 3 minus root 3, which will just give us 1 root 3. OK, uh, let's look at some others. Root 32. Root 32 is going to give us 4 root 2. If you spend your time breaking that down, we can write this as 4 root 2. Minus now 2 root 2, which will quite clearly give us 2 root 2. And again, if you want to check that on a calculator, you can now see. If we put in root 32, this will now give us it in its simplest form, which is 4 root 2. And then if we minus from this, what we'll have is minus for 2 root 2. We can see now that that's going to give us a 2 root 2. So that's a basic idea. Um, if you want to make your life easier, decide not and do this on a calculator. To check, you can do. OK, let's look at the last one. We've got 5 root 500 minus 3 root 5. So let's look at a skill that I used before. And I wrote this now as 5. And then it was uh, the root of 5 multiplied by the root of 100. Then we've got minus 3 root 5. This gives us 10. Square root of 100 is 10, so we have 10 root 5 minus 3 root 5, which is quite clearly going to give us 7 root 5. So the ones that look a bit daunting, just think, can I manipulate them any further to make my life easier? So the take-home message is, with adding and subtracting, you must add or subtract like thirds only, unless you can manipulate them. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so uh, just a couple more of these. Let's just do one or two of these. Root 18 plus root 50. So let's first rewrite this. We can write this now as 3 root 2. Root 18, if we prime factored it, would be 3 times by 3 times by 2. Root 50, we could write as 5 root 2. So if we prime factorise 50, we could write 50 as 5 times 5 times 2. 
So all we would need to do then is simply add those. And that would give us now eight root two. And again, check it on a calculator if you like. Okay, let's look at this one right here. We got root 48. Now this is gonna give me, and here's, an, here's another way that you could think about this. This is gonna give me root three, and I'm not suggesting this is a, a must, multiplied by root 16. And then what we're going to do is minus from this root 27. 3 times by 3 times by 3 is 27. So we could write this now as root 3 multiplied by 3. This is going to give me 4. So this will become 4 root 3 minus 3 root 3, which is going to give us now root 3. And again, if you check that on the calculator, let's put that in. Root 48 minus root 27 is going to give us now the root 3. If you want, though, I've kind of shortcut that. As you can see, I've spotted 16 is one of the factors and then simply written that as 4, 4 root 3 minus 3 root 3, but by all means break it down in exactly the same way that we've been doing before. OK, let's do something slightly different. OK, we're asked to express in the form a plus b root 3. So all we're doing is simply multiplying out brackets. So if we had, for example, 2 and then we had x plus 3, we'd end up now with 2x plus 6. If we had now x and then 3 minus x, we would expand this to get 3x minus x squared. We do exactly the same with thirds. So root 3 times by 2 is going to give us 2 root 3. Then we're going to get root 3 multiplied by positive root 3, which is just going to give us 3. If we look at, uh, let's look at another interesting one. What else have we got? Uh, this one. So what we've got on this particular example, we're going to get double brackets. So if we had, now let's do an example, x plus 1, and then we had x plus 2. If we expanded this out, you might use FOIL, so we'd have x squared. Then we would have plus 2x, so plus 2x. Then the inner terms, we would have plus x. And then the last terms, we would have plus 2. We do exactly the same here. So what we've got here is 4 plus root 3 multiplied by 1 plus 2 root 3. So let's see what we're going to get. 4 times by 1 will give me 4. 4 times by 2 root 3 is going to give me plus 8 root 3. Root 3 times by 1 is going to give me plus root 3. And then I'm going to get root 3 times by root 3 times by 2. Root 3 times by root 3 is 3 times by 2 is going to give me 6. So we can tidy this up. 4 plus 6 is going to give me 10, and then we're going to have plus 9 root 3. And again, if you want to look at this in a calculator, you can put your double brackets in to check your answers. In exams, though, 9 out of 10 times, these will be on non-calculator papers, and you'll be expected to show your workings. So simply whacking it through a calculator is not really, well, anyone could do it, as you can see from here. And that will give us our answer of 10 plus 9 root 3. OK, so that's expanding brackets. You can do a couple of these. This is exactly the same. All we'd have is a repeated bracket of 3 root 3 minus 4 and just expand it. OK, let's see what else we've got. Um, exactly the same. So as we were doing before, which we could do another example of if we just pick one, let's pick this one right here. So what we've got then is 2 root 7 plus 3 multiplied by 2 root 7 plus 3. OK, let's do the first terms. 2 times 2 is 4. Root 7 times by root 7 is going to give us 7. So this is going to be 4 times by 7, which will give us 28. Plus 2 lots now, 2 times root 7 times by 3, which is going to give us plus 6 root 7. We're going to get exactly the same here. We're going to get plus 6 root 7. And then finally, we're going to get plus uh, 3 multiplied by plus 3, which is going to give us 9. Add it all together, we're going to get 37 plus 12 root 7. 7. And again, put it for a calculator. If we put this in, we would have now 2, and then we'd have the root of 7 plus 3, and we could square this term, and that would give us exactly what we've just found, a 37 plus 12 root 7. So as you can see, the calculator keeps it in this value. Whatever you do, don't start putting these numbers in. Don't go to the decimals. Leave it in what we call exact form. Exact form is a third. It might be pi well, as you get on later in your work, the number E. OK, let's see what else we've got. OK, we're asked to express each of the following as simply as possible with a rational denominator. 
Mathematicians are strange creatures and they hate having an irrational number in the denominator. Therefore, what we do is something called rationalising the denominator. All we need to do in this particular case is multiply top and bottom by root 5. If we do that, what we'll have now is 1 over root 5, and I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the root 5. So quite clearly, 1 times by root 5 is going to give us uh, root 5. Then root 5 times by root 5 is just going to give us 5. This is now what we call a rational denominator. This is a rational number. Before it was irrational, so rationalising the denominator gives us 5. So on this one, we would have now 2 multiplied by root 3, divided by root 3, multiplied by root 3. So that's going to give us now 2 root 3 over 3. Let's look at this one. We've got now 14, so we need to multiply top and bottom by root 7. So we're going to have root 7 multiplied by root 7. That's going to give me 14 root 7 on the top, and then we're going to have 7 on the bottom. We can cancel the 14 and 7, so this becomes 2 root 7. So that's the, the basic idea. Um, you can do a lot with them beforehand. If you want to simplify them, you can do. It's perfectly fine. So for example, on this one, if you wanted, you could multiply top and bottom by root 15. But we could use a different trick on this one if we wanted. In general, you'll use this form. But on this particular example, we could write this now as root 5 divided by root 3 multiplied by root 5. 3 times by 5 is 15. So what we'd have in this particular case is these cancelling. And that would leave us 1 over root 3. Multiplying top and bottom by root 3, we'd end up now with root 3 over 3. That is an alternative. You can simplify first. Entirely up to you. You think that's slightly long-winded. Just go for a usual approach. So that's, that's rationalising. Again, you can simplify a lot of these beforehand and work with them. So, for example, if you wanted to simplify that, that one, let's just write this. This is going to give us now 12 over. And we could write this now as root 2 multiplied by root 36. The root of 36 is 6. So this is giving us 12 over 6 root 2 which is going to give me 2 over root 2. Multiplying top and bottom by the root 2, we can see what we're going to get now is uh, 2 times by root 2 multiplied by over root 2 multiplied by root 2, which is going to end us up giving us now 2 root 2 over 2, which of course is root 2. Lots of different approaches on that particular method as well. So all I've done is rewritten it, simplified it but by all means you can multiply top and bottom by root 72 you're just going to have a little more work to do so if we looked at that one what we've got then is 12 over root 72 and this will simply break down now to what i've just done so there we go that's our root 2 by simplifying first so entirely up to you. If you wanted to try it with this one, again, you could multiply top and bottom by root 54. Alternatively, if you can spot that, uh, 54 is 9 times by 6. So what we could do is write this as 2, and then what we'd have then is multiplied by root 9 multiplied by root 6. That's 54. The root of 9 is going to give us 3, so these would cancel. So we could write this as 1 over 2 root 6. Multiplying top and bottom by the root 6, so let's multiply the top and bottom by root 6. On the top, we would have root 6. On the bottom, we would have 2 times root 6 times by root 6, which is going to give me 2 times by 6, which is 12. And again, if you put this through a calculator, what we'll have now is the following. 3 over 2 root 54. So there we go. We end up with root 6 over 12. As I'm doing these, um, I'm kind of doing them as I go. So if you have a quicker technique, feel free to use it. The whole idea is just to give you different ways of looking at things. OK, so there we go. That's rationalising the denominator, the simple cases. These are the slightly harder cases. And what we're going to do is use the difference of squares or multiply them by what we call the conjugate. If we had, now let's just uh, do this now. What we've got, let's take x plus 5 and then x minus 5. If we expanded this, we would get x squared minus 25. This is a difference of squares. So we get x squared minus 5x plus 5x minus 25. And as we can see, these terms would cancel. 
We can do the same with thirds to rationalize the denominator. So what I'm going to do is multiply top and bottom by what we call the conjugate. The conjugate just means that you're going to swap the signs. So what we've got then is root 2 plus 1, and we're going to multiply this now by root 2 minus 1. Multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate. Quite clearly, we're going to have on the top root 2 minus 1. All we need to do is expand this bottom part out. Over time, you'll recognise that it's just simply this number squared minus this number squared on the bottom. But to begin with, we will expand it out fully. So root 2 times by root 2 will give me 2. Root 2 times by minus 1 will give me minus root 2, plus root 2, and then we're going to have at the end minus 1. So these are going to cancel, so what we'd have is root 2 minus 1 over 2 minus 1, which of course is just going to give us root 2 minus 1. So, as you see, we end up with this number squared minus this number squared, but in your workings, you will have to show now the additional part, certainly in the early stages of your maths career. Okay, so let's do the next one. We've got 4 over root 3 minus 1. We're going to multiply this by the conjugate, which is root 3 plus 1. Multiplying top and bottom by exactly the same. On the top, we're going to get 4, the quantity, root 3 plus 1. At this stage, don't expand it out. Just leave it as it is. And on the bottom, we're going to get root 3 times by root 3, which is going to give me 3. Then we're going to get plus root 3. We're going to get minus root 3. And then we're going to get minus 1. So what we end up with then is the following. We've got 4 lots of root 3 plus 1. On the bottom, as I said before, it's this number squared minus this number squared, which gives me 2. We didn't expand the top out because I can see if I can cancel further. So our final answer would be 2 root 3 plus 1, or you could say 2 root 3 plus 2. I prefer just to write it like so. Again, if we put this through a calculator, we would have now 4, and we would divide this now and put it in here. We would have root 3 minus 1, and it will now give us this value right here. Okay, so 2 plus uh, 2 root 3. Okay, so that's, that's uh, essentially rationalising when we've got uh, uh, in the bottom a plus or minus sign. The take-home point is, when rationalising, if you've only got a third in the bottom or a number multiplied by a third, you simply multiply top and bottom by that third. If you have a plus or minus in the bottom, you multiply it by the conjugate. There are only two examples that you're going to come across. You've either got a plus or minus in the bottom, or you've simply got a third. Okay, let's do, uh, let's do another one. Let's do this 2 root 3. So what we've got then is 2 root 3, and we've got 7 minus 4 root 3. So what we're going to have then is the following. We're going to multiply top and bottom by 7 plus 4 root 3. And instead of writing this out in full, I'm now going to just go straight at it. So what we've got is 7 plus 4 root 3. So on the top, what we're going to have is the following, and we can expand this out on the top. We're going to end up now with 2 root 3 multiplied by 7, which is going to give me 14 root 3. And then we're going to get 2 times by 4, which is 8, times by the, uh, root 3 times by root 3, which is going to give me plus 24. On the bottom, so all I've done is 2 times 4, which is 8, root 3 times by root 3, which is 3, which is 24. On the bottom, what we're going to do is square this number and subtract away the square of this number. If we consider now the square of 4 root 3 is root 48. If you want to check that, you can put that in a calculator. Let's just do that. Root 48, we can give now as 4 root 3. So what we're doing then is 7 squared. So that's going to be 7 squared minus now 4 root 3 squared. So we're going to get 49 minus 48, which of course is just 1, so we end up now with 14 root 3 plus 24, and that's quite a hard example. So if we put this straight through a calculator and we wanted to find that, what we could do is to find we could have 2 root 3, and then we'd have now 7 minus 4 root 3, and this will just end up giving us this value right here. So there we go, 24 plus 14 root 3. As stated, if you're an exam, a GCSE exam, for example, you would show all your workings. But after a while, you'll spot that it's going to be that number minus that number. 
Okay, let's now move on. Um, so exactly the same on these, no different. Let's just do one of these. What we're going to have then, the top one is going to be 1 plus root 3. And then what we're going to have is 2 plus root 3. Multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate of 2 minus root 3. And then 2 minus root 3. So what we're going to get, and again, if you want to do this long form, you're going to have 2 times by 2 minus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 minus root 3 times by root 3. Alternatively, if you're not asked to and you just want to do this in your workings, this number squared minus this number squared. So on the bottom, we're going to have 4 minus 3. On the top, expanding this out, 1 times by 2 will give me 2. Then we're going to have minus root 3. And then we're going to have plus 2 root 3. And then we're going to end up with root 3 times by root 3, which is 3. It's a negative, so we need to subtract that. So we end up now, this is going to give us 1 in the bottom. 2 minus 3 is minus 1. And then we've got 2 root 3 minus the root 3, which is just going to give me root 3 minus the 1 over 1, which, of course, we can write as root 3 minus 1. Again, checking on a calculator. All we can do is put this in. And the good thing about these newer style calculators... Well, I say newer style, new at the time, newer at the time of me making this. Um, perhaps if you're watching it in 50 years, it won't be new. Um, but the newer style calculator, I'll get back on track, will give us that straight away. So we can see minus 1 plus 3 uh, root 3, which is exactly the same as what we've got. Okay, so that's rationalising. Um, okay, let's just have a look. Right, okay, now we're going to look at a word-based question. So we're actually applying this to uh, simple maths. So in the question, it says the diagram shows a rectangle measuring 3 root 2 minus 3 centimetres by L centimetres. Given that the area of the rectangle is 6 centimetres squared, find the exact value of L in its simplest form. Okay, so let's use some of our basic knowledge. The area of a rectangle, so let's write the area, the area is given as now the length multiplied by the width. So we've got the width, we've got the area, and we want to find the length. So what we could write now is the following. We could say the area was 6, and what we'd have now is the following. We'd have L multiplied by our 3 root 2 minus 3. Therefore, what we could write now is the following. If we wanted to find L, we could say that L, dividing both sides by the content of the bracket, L was going to be equal to 6 divided by 3 root 2 minus 3. So this is a problem what we've got. What I'm going to do is just make this slightly simpler. So if we divide now, we can divide top and bottom by, uh, what can we take out of that, 3. So we can say that the length is going to be 2 over root 2. 2 minus 1. All we need, so all I've done is divide that by 3. All we need to do now is rationalise. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, which is going to give me root 2 plus 1. So on top, root 2 plus 1. As stated, if you're going to expand this out, you're more than welcome to do so. I'm just going to look at it as this number squared minus this number squared. So on the bottom, we're going to have 2 minus 1. Then on the top, what we're going to have is two lots of root 2 plus 1. So, this quite clearly gives us 1. I'm not going to bother expanding the brackets. I'm going to say it's going to be 2 lots of root 2 plus 1 centimetres. And again, if we want to check that, if we do this in a calculator, we're going to have 6 divided by 3 root 2, and then we're going to subtract away from that 3, and that will give us exactly what we've just found of 2 plus root 2 centimetres. So that's the value of L. So that's a nice little wordy question. Okay, let's move on to another one. Uh, okay, let's have a look what we've got. Uh, nice big, nice big question. So in triangle ABC, we've got AB. So AB is here. What's that? 2 root 3 minus 1. BC is root 3 plus 2. And angle ABC is 90 degrees. So right angle triangle. We need to find the exact area of triangle ABC in its simplest form. Okay, so what do we know about a triangle? This is a right angle triangle, so all we need is one half base times height. So the area of the triangle is going to give us one half base times by height. So let's have a look what we're going to get. We need to multiply these two, so we're going to have one half multiplied now by 2 root 3 minus 1 multiplied now by root 3 plus 2. So let's just leave a half alone and then we'll just expand 
these brackets out. So 2 root 3 multiplied by root 3, root 3 times by root 3 is going to give us 3, 2 times 3 will give me 6. 2 root 3 multiplied by positive 2 will give me plus 4 root 3. Minus 1 times by root 3 is going to give us minus root 3. And then we're going to have minus 1 times by 2, which is going to give us minus 2. So we've got 1 half now, and then we're going to have 4. And then we're going to have, what's that going to give me? Uh, plus 3 root 3. And all we need to do is divide this by 2. So we can say 2 plus 3 over 2 root 3. And that's going to be centimetres squared. So that is the area in what we call exact form, and it's in its simplest form. So again, if you wanted to put that into a calculator, you could have now 2 root 3, and then we would subtract 1 from that, and we would multiply this now by the quantity root 3 plus 2, and all we need is half of this. Area of triangle is going to be half, and then we divide that by 2, and we get now our value right here, which is exactly what I've done. 4 plus 3 root 3 over 2. I've just simplified it. You can leave it as a single fraction. OK, we need to show that AC is going to be now 2 root 5. So this is AC right here. So what we're going to do is use Pythagoras. OK, so Pythagoras says now, and this is quite a nice question, A squared plus B squared will be equal to C squared. So one particular choice that we could do now is to square this term. We could square this term, add them together and square root them. So let's do that then. If we have now 2 root 3 minus 1 and we square that, so we'll do 2 root 3 minus 1, which will square. So 2 root 3 minus 1. This is now going to give me, 2 times by 2 is going to give me 4. Root 3 times by root 3 is going to give me 3. So that's going to be 12. We're going to have now minus 2 root 3 minus another 2 root 3, which is going to give us minus 4 root 3. And then we're going to have plus 1. So that's what we end up with if we square that one. Let's now square the next one. And what we're going to do is add these together and square root them. So what the next one is, we've got the next one, and the next one is going to be the root 3 plus 2. So we need to square this term, and we're going to have now root 3 plus 2 multiplied now by root 3 plus 2. So if we square this, we're going to have now 3 plus 4 root 3. If I expand 2 root 3, 2 root 3, I'm going to get plus 4 root 3, and then plus 4. So if we add all of this up, I've got 13, then I've got 16, and I've got 20. So what we end up with then, adding these, we've got 12 minus 4 root 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 4 root 3 plus 4. So 12, the 3, the 1, and the 4, that's going to give me now a total of 20. These are going to cancel out, so what we need to do is square root our answer. We know c, we can say c squared, so c squared is 20. The square root of this quite clearly is going to break down to this. Just think about 20, it's 2 times by 2 times by 5, therefore 2 root 5. So all we've done is use Pythagoras. Um, I'm kind of doing this as I go, so if there is a quick way, feel free to show it. Um, drop, me, drop me a line. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, probably, I'd say that's probably a quickest way of doing it. Okay, next one, what else have we got to do? Okay, so we need to show the tan of the angle ACB. So this is the ACB, that's fine. ACB is just here, we need to show that's 5 root 3 minus 8. So let's just consider what we've got. This is the angle right here, so let's call this now theta. Okay, what we want, if we want the tan of the angle, that is the opposite over the adjacent. So what we've got then is this is the opposite and this is the adjacent. So what we're going to do is the following. We will do, and we'll put it down here, the opposite now is going to be the 2 root 3 minus 1. So we're going to have 2 root 3 minus 1, and we're going to divide that by the adjacent, which is the root 3 plus 2. So again, all we need to do is rationalise. Opposite over adjacent, we're going to multiply top and bottom now by the conjugate. So the conjugate will give us our difference of squares, and that will be root 3 minus 2. Root 3 minus 2. So let's look at the bottom. As we know, when we expand this out, it's going to be this number squared, which is 3, minus this number squared. So we can have on the bottom, we can have 3 minus 4, which will give us minus 1. 2 root 3 times by root 3, or root 3 times by root 3 is 3. 
and then two times by root uh, two times by three will give me six. Then we're going to have minus four root three. So all I'm doing is multiplying the outer terms. Uh, we're going to have now minus four root three. Then the inner terms we're going to have minus root three. Okay, and then the final terms we're going to have plus two. So this is minus one. So that's going to leave me minus one on the bottom. So essentially what we've got is six minus four root three minus root three plus two all over now minus one, which we can write like so. So just multiplying the negative through, that's going to give me plus five root three. Then we're going to get six plus two, which is eight. It's going to be negative and we end up with five root three minus eight as required. So there we go, um, a whistle stop, or well, a 40 minute whistle stop tour of certs. Uh, I'm kind of thinking that the majority of the answers I've done are going to be correct. I've done them as I go, I've not prepared it, so apologies if there is anything slightly amiss, but hopefully you've got the main technique to solve all problems that you can come up against.